Thank you, Manish Didi, for inviting me here. My due regards to one and all present in the group, in particular Professor Rajiv Kumar, who has joined us today. So I am going to present the content on education for living relationship. <coughs> so this relationship is a major issue for all of us, particularly when working in institutions, we can see how many problems we face in relationships with peers, you know, with subordinates, with seniors, and this happens with the students also. So can we resolve these issues? We can also see that with lack of understanding of relationship, our job increases. The time and money that we have to invest you know, in our day-to-day -day life while working institutions goes high. So can we really resolve these issues? The discussion is started with this. So education for human character through universal human values, and we talked about you know, there are three components which are important to a human being. One is the right understanding, the second is the relationship and third is the physical facility. Where right understanding holds the first priority. And we talk about, when we talk about right understanding, <coughs> then particularly this we discuss in more detail in our workshops, then we have to realize the harmony, innate harmony in the existence, so that our feelings and thoughts are based on harmony. Now with that clarity, <coughs> we can discuss in detail what really relationship means, how we can ensure justice in relationships. We are acquainted with these words, we have been using these words for a long time. Can we really make out what are the feelings which are naturally acceptable to each and every human being? So that when we live with those feelings, there can be harmony and continuity. So these are the issues which are really needed to be explored. At the very outset, <coughs> let me mention that whatever is being said is a proposal. And everything that I am going to utter from here is a proposal and we keep on exploring those things. Nothing is to be taken as granted. And we do not have to judge it as true or false, but rather we have to verify it. And when I go to verify it, I see that there is something very innate in me, which I term as natural acceptance, on the basis of which I can verify whether something is right or wrong. Whether something is naturally acceptable to me or not acceptable to me. Okay. So if something appeals to my natural acceptance, I can go with it. If something does not appeal to my natural acceptance, I will not go with it. So all the time, the task that I need to do is to refer to my natural acceptance. And we we'll see that this faculty is very much there in me all the time, only that I don't refer to it. And it is a process of dialogue. This dialogue starts with me and you, but slowly that will take the shape of a dialogue within your own self. Okay. So we have two realities associated with us. One is my natural acceptance, the way I really want to be. And the second is my living, the way I am, my thought, my behavior, my work, my participation. And we can see that there is a gap and the whole problem in my life is this gap. The more I am able to refer to my natural acceptance, the gap diminishes. The more I am able to see my natural acceptance clearly, my thoughts become harmonious, my feelings become harmonious. And this is something that I need to do. And if you look at education, basically the basic motive behind education is to reduce this gap or to remove this gap. If a human being can live as per his natural acceptance, you know, after going through education, education is successful. But if the gap continues, you know, then the education is not successful. Because I am not able to live the way I really want to be. Now educational institutions, <coughs> when we talk about them, let us ask a few questions. Is it desirable that the teachers, students, staff, management, you know, everybody who is a part of the institution, they develop the right feeling and the capacity to live with fulfillment in the relationship with each other in the whole campus? Now, if you try to reflect our, at the institution to which we belong, right, we can see that there is a whole lot of problems here in relationships. There is a whole lot of, you know, in fact, unknowingly we have come to assume that there is struggle for survival and only the fittest can survive and unknowingly we are struggling with each other to survive, right? So there is a lot of preconditioning that goes beneath it. But it still remains a challenge that can we live with the feeling of relationship in the whole campus? Is it desirable that the teachers, students, staff, management, they can be prepared to extend the fulfillment that is justice to their family, neighborhood, community, the district, nation, the whole world family? Can we even plan for a whole world family? Can we even think of a whole world family? <coughs> Now, if you look at the level institution, we are finding it a challenge. But is it really doable that we can live like a family in the institution and then extend it to the whole world family? So that is something that we are going to explore. So in the first keynote, we had reflected on the question, the unhappiness in our family is more due to 
lack of physical facility or more due to lack of fulfillment in relationship and we had found that the unhappiness is more due to lack of fulfillment in relationship and not due to physical facility so the major issue in the family is of relationship while most of the time and effort is spent on physical facility now is it the same in educational institutions and what places do find it out what do you think can we see the same thing in educational institutions also hai na that the most of the time and effort is being spent for physical facility while the problem lies more with the relationship if the student in the class feels related to the student we don't need to do so many things that we have to do for monitoring the students in the class in the examinations in the campus if the students feel related to each other we don't have to have separate committees for discipline right so we can see that the problem lies more with the relationship while most of the time and effort is getting spent for physical facility so the problem is we are trying to assume relationship on the basis of body this is something that we are going to explore we are trying to fulfill relationship on the basis of body <coughs> with physical facility at the focus so one major preconditioning is that human being has come to assume himself or herself as the body and so we are trying to look at every issue at the level of body and since the needs of the body are fulfilled by physical facilities we are trying to sort out all the problems through physical facilities right of course assuming relationship on the basis of body does not work in spite of all good intentions we end up sometimes not speaking to each other for days or ignoring some family members and so on as long as we consider human being to be the body it is not possible to understand relationship without understanding relationship it is not possible to fulfill relationship even though we want to fulfill the relationship so it is essential to understand relationship for living relationship with human being so now what we'll do we'll first try to understand the human being if i am not clear about myself how can i ever be clear about the other right if i have some wrong notions about me the same wrong notion will prevail about the other and when i go to live with those wrong notions <coughs> right then the kind of unhappiness contradiction dilemma that i carry within myself get carried away with the relationship and we keep on fighting with the other assuming that the other is problem in fact there is an author who has written a book i don't remember the name of the author at this moment the first line of the book is the other is hell right so we assume that the whole source of my problems in my life is the other if the other is not there right then my problems are going to be sorted out but just ask yourself who is the most difficult person in your life with whom to continue is most difficult you will find that it is yourself you just do one experiment for a day you remove all sources of information tv books you know don't have any other person in your room also try to spend one day with yourself and see how you feel at the evening right you will find that you are completely exhausted fighting with yourself so we need to understand ourselves first so that we can understand the other human being so when i <coughs> go to understand myself that is human being i can see that there are two entities one is the body and the other is self right so i am there and body is also there and the two are coexisting in fact the two are coexisting in such a good manner that we confuse between the two but when you try to explore a bit you can see that there are certain differences which can which can we can easily make out which a child can also easily make out if i am able to make out those differences i can be very clear of the two distinct entities that are there so who makes decisions find it out who enjoys food music movies who feels high elated low depressed what do you think i or body i so <clears throat> when you look at the need we can see that there are two different kinds of needs of our human being like one set of needs is the physical facility like food clothes shelter all these things you know which are needed for the body the other set of need is feelings like respect trust you know happiness these are my needs now whatever whatever i need for myself i want in continuity for example happiness do i want it for few moments or in continuity continuity you know every time feeling of respect every time let us say there is a friend of yours who says good morning to you every day right? but some day he misses it out right and you feel something awkward right because you want that feeling of respect to continue 
and that one missed out. But if you look at the need of the body, you can find very easily that this is temporary. We need three times you know, in a day food, we need you know, other physical facilities also from time to time but not in continuity. So every need of the body will find that is there in which is temporary. The second thing that you can see is that our needs, that is my needs are qualitative in terms of feelings. You know. For example, you cannot quantify respect. How many meters of respect you want? 2 meters, 4 meters, 6 meters? You just can't quantify. You know? I want respect, that's all. I don't want disrespect. But when we talk about physical facilities, we can easily see that they are quantitative. You know? They are required in a limited quantity. We can quantify food, we can quantify clothes, you know? everything in terms of physical facility we quantify. Now, are these needs of different types or the same type? Same type, same type or different? One is qualitative, the other is quantitative. One is continuous, the other is temporary. Huh? So that gives a hint that I am also different from my body. Because my needs are, needs are entirely different from my body. <coughs> are both types of needs important? Yes. Huh? Yes. They are important. Are we working to fulfill both types of needs? So primarily we will see that we are largely focused on the right part, assuming that this will fetch the left part also. Right. So what is the priority between the needs of the self and needs of the body? <coughs> what holds a higher priority? Can we make out? Self. I'll give an example. Let us say there is a friend of yours you know, whom you met 10 years uh, later, right? And he, you just met him in the market, he takes you home and feeds you all good dishes, right? And at the end, when you have completed your dish, he just tells you that this kind of food must be available only rarely to you. How do you feel? Right? You don't feel good. Would you ever like to go to that house again? No. Because the needs of the self hold a higher priority. Even if there is a friend who does not feed you such a good food, but treats you with respect, with trust, with affection, right? You feel better. You would like to visit that person again and again. Now you see that <coughs> the needs of the body are fulfilled by physiochemical things. Physiochemical things means things like food, clothes, shelter, you know, all these are physiochemical things. While the needs of the self are fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling. So we can see that entirely you know, my needs are different from the needs of the body. So the needs of the body cannot be fulfilled by right understanding, right feelings alone. And the needs of the self cannot be fulfilled by physiochemical things also. So both are necessary. You know, both have to be fulfilled separately, both have to be understood separately. In living, what is the priority? <coughs> How much time and effort is spent for right understanding and right feelings? How much time and effort is spent for physical facility? What do you think? How much time we are spending for physical facility? How much time we are spending for right understanding right feelings? <laughs> we'll see that mostly, you know, in fact 90% of the time when we are awake is spent for working for physical facility and 10% of the time you know, is spent for patching up the problem that we have developed in that 90% of the time. When you invite people for workshop, you know, they say that you have to sit for 8 days, you, know, you have to invest 1 week. Right? Now if you see, in a whole year, we are not able to spend even one week for the self, which holds the higher priority. Now the second thing that is associated with it is the activity part. Right? So if you look at the activity of the body, it is eating, walking, all these activities which are physiochemical. When you look at the activity of the self, it is completely different. You know? Desire, thought, expectation, these are some sentient activities, conscious activities. And every activity of you is continuous, while every activity of the body is temporary, right? It is intermittent. Here, it is continuous. Like we keep on desiring all the time, we keep on thinking all the time. There is some expectation or the other all the time. So every activity of the self is continuous. So we can see that there are two separate worlds. One is the world of material, the other is the world of consciousness. 
and human being is the coexistence of these two separate worlds a conscious entity and a material entity now this is very basic to understand relationship when i'm not clear about this no i cannot recognize the other also if i treat myself as material right i treat all my needs as material i treat the other as material i treat all the needs of the other as material and keep on investing my whole life for material and that becomes a big blunder so we have to identify understand this conscious part when i am able to see this i can see that the other is also a coexistence of self and body and the relationship lies here at the level of self the body only becoming an instrument in the fulfillment of relationship so with the clarity that human being is coexistence of self and body we can now explore human human relationship now when i go to explore i find that there are four things there are four aspects which we need to understand about relationship one is that relationship is there it is very much there we don't have a choice we are all embedded in relationships you know when i am working in a institution there is a relationship whether i recognize it or not whether i live accordingly or not you know whether i address it or not i am there i am embedded in relationship i am born in a family i work in the society and everywhere i am related to everybody else second thing that we can see that this relationship exists between one self and the other self right so i am related i means i1 is related to i2 the other at the level of self right then whenever there is relationship there are feelings in relationship so there are certain feelings which i naturally accept within myself you know for the other there are certain feelings which the other naturally accepts within one for me and again those feelings are there in the self not the body the third thing that is being said is these feelings are not abstract these feelings are not vague they are very much definite you know they can be recognized they can be discussed they can be defined they can be explored they can be understood they can be shared right so they are definite feelings and we can share them we can discuss them you know we can study them we can ensure them when i am able to do this <coughs> then i am able to fulfill this in relationship and when i fulfill this then the next thing that follows is evaluation right when i am able to do the right evaluation of the fulfillment in relationship that leads to mutual happiness and this is something that we aspire for mutual happiness i aspire for mutual happiness in every relationship every moment whether i am able to ensure it or not so of course you know relationship is between one self and the other self right now if you look at the human being who is recognizing the relationship self or body so we made out it is self so one self is recognizing the relationship with another self so in that sense the relationship is between one self and the other self and the body is only an instrument what do you think is this fine or we need to discuss this the feelings are there in the self or the body self you know not the body <coughs> then we can see that the relationship is something which is there not that we have to make relationship this is also something that needs to be addressed you know that we cannot have this make and shift arrangement in relationship we cannot cannot have pick and drop thing in relationship at the level of fulfillment we may keep on doing this but at the level of feeling we are very much related you know whether i recognize it or not whether i accept it or not so the relationship is there we only have to understand the relationship when we understand relationship we are able to see that relationship is there we are able to accept the relationship and then in think in terms of fulfilling the relationship when we don't understand it the relationship is still there but we are not able to see the relationship we are not able to accept the relationship and therefore we are not able to fulfill the relationship now this is mark in red because this is the problem that we are facing you know a lot of time in our life <coughs> the second thing that there are feelings in relationship you know so as we discussed that feelings are in the self you know not in the body so there are feelings in relationship in one self for the other self we can see that the core thing in relationship are the feelings and one can understand this only when one can understand the self so if one does not understand the self one does not understand the relationship too if i am not clear about myself i cannot understand the other 
you know, if I have not done my homework of understanding myself, right, how will I ever be able to relate myself to the other? So the understanding of myself is very basic. The major crisis we are facing in relationship today is because of the failure to understand the self. So we can see that, in fact, in the workshop also, you know, in the level one workshop, we discuss all the levels of living in detail, right? And then when you have level two workshop, we discuss the harmony in the self because that is very basic. Unless I understand the harmony in the self, you know, I cannot proceed further in relationships. So we are trying to assume relationship on the basis of body and trying to fulfill relationship on the basis of body and it does not work in spite of all good intentions. Right? So we can see this, that we are trying to mend our relationships, we are trying to make them better, we are trying to have fulfilling relationships, but all the time we get stuck. Now when you go to recognize the feelings, <coughs> we can see that there are nine feelings which are you know, very basic, which are naturally acceptable to us. So the first feeling, which is the foundation value of any relationship, is trust, vishwas. The second feeling is respect, then affection, then care, guidance, reverence, glory, gratitude, and love. Love is a complete value. So the feeling of relationship starts with trust. We'll see what trust means. Unless I trust the other, I don't feel related to the other. And the feeling of relationship gets completed, gets ever flowing with the feeling of love. Right? When I am able to see my relationship with each and every human being. Right? We can identify them, investigate them and understand this, you know, that these are the feelings naturally acceptable to us in relationship with the other human being. So this is something like in discussion we can discuss in little you know, short time. But when I go to explore this, this may take a whole lot of time for me to ensure these feelings in me, to ensure the feeling of trust in me. And when I am able to ensure them, Right? We can see that there is a whole lot of transformation taking place in my life. My whole thought process changes. The moment I am able to see the trust in me, my whole thought process that was based earlier on mistrust or some kind of you know, belief gets transformed. Right? Now, <coughs> just find out right, what is naturally acceptable to you. Feeling of trust or mistrust. Feeling of respect or disrespect. Feeling of affection or jealousy, feeling of care or exploitation, guidance or misguidance, you know? reverence or irreverence, glory or inglorious feelings, gratitude or something otherwise, right? Ingratitude, love or hatred. Right? A we look at the written on the right side, you know, does not make us comfortable. Think we do not want any of these feelings in us, right? Though we may be having all these feelings in us, but the very you know, look at even the word makes us uncomfortable because it is not acceptable to us naturally. What is naturally acceptable is something written on the left hand side. But just find it out. Is this fine? <coughs> so are these feelings naturally acceptable to you? And are these feelings naturally acceptable to the other also? This is something this is something that we are going to explore. <coughs> now next comes fulfillment and the evaluation. Right? So these feelings are naturally acceptable to me, therefore having these feelings in myself leads to my happiness. These feelings are naturally acceptable to the other, therefore their fulfillment leads to the happiness of the other also. Now when I talk about evaluation, you will find that in any relationship there are four evaluations involved. Right? One is evaluation of by myself of myself, I evaluate myself. The second evaluation is I evaluate the other, right? whether the fulfillment has been done or not. The third is the other evaluates himself or herself and the fourth is the other evaluates me. Unless all these four evaluations are right, the fulfillment in relationship will not take place. Right? So we can see that the relationship is something very serious to be understood. We can see that we have to invest time for this and having all these four evaluations right will do take time. You know? It needs a whole lot of exploration within me. Can we see that the problems in relationship are due to absence of one or more of these feelings? And this is something that we try to compensate with the physical facility. When you have these feelings in you, does it lead to your happiness? When you have the, when we express the feeling to the other, does it lead to the happiness of the other? So evaluation is required to verify, first of all, whether these feelings are naturally acceptable to me or not. Being here, we may just say that yes, this is acceptable. But when you go to live with the other person, 
are at that moment also we are able to see that yes this is something that was acceptable to me so i have not lived accordingly whether i have these feelings or not whether i have expressed these feelings to the other or not whether it has reached to the other or not and and ultimately whether the other result whether the result is mutual happiness or not now when we analyze the current situation you know we can see that today we are unhappy because we have not understood these feelings and they are not in us we only expect the other to express these feelings to us if the other expresses these feelings to us we feel happy if the other does not express these feelings to us we feel unhappy why if we see the relationship has become such like you know we all have become beggars of feelings in relationship our bowels are empty and we are borrowing these feelings from the other that the other should have some trust you know which he can pour in my bowl right without ensuring these feelings in me right so relationship has taken the shape of this kind of thing you know we are trying to borrow feelings from the other without ensuring these feelings in ourselves if someone does not have the feeling of respect because he has not understood it then he or she cannot express the feeling of respect that the others are looking for in this situation to get respect people do many things and these are some of the you know issues like if you just assume that respect is going to be fetched by clothes you know and you want respect in continuity can you ever make out how many pairs of clothes you want if you feel that the feeling of respect is going to be ensured by having a villa in the colony can you ever make out how many rooms in that villa is going to be no? similarly you know if you have to purchase a car and they are trying to purchase the car for respect can you ever make out what would be the price of the car 20 years back if in india if somebody has maruti 800 it was considered to be respectable if somebody today has maruti 800 you know he feels ashamed right now this is the thing that is happening today people are not able to express these feelings of respect to others because they don't have it but they are trying hard to get it from others it is like everyone is begging for respect and everybody's bowl is empty so what is the way forward <clears throat> the most fundamental thing is to understand these feelings if i understand these feelings then i have these feelings in me if i understand the feeling of trust i have the feeling of trust within me if i have feeling of trust i am comfortable that is in harmony within myself this leads to my happiness when i am happy i naturally express the feeling of trust to the other this makes the other happy in this way understanding the feeling having the feeling expressing the feeling and the right evaluation right of the feeling leads to mutual so the last line if you see this is basically the meaning of justice when i am able to ensure all these elements i am able to recognize the feelings correctly i am able to fulfill them correctly the evaluation takes place rightly and that results in mutual happiness that is justice right and justice is something that we need every moment in every relationship presently if you see the courts that we have you know most of the issues that are being dealt there or all the issues that are being dealt there is are there because justice has not been met so we are trying to fight injustice in place of ensuring justice so ensuring justice is a proactive program if i am able to ensure justice in my relationship you know in my surrounding right i never need to go to a court you know so the fights for injustice they will become redundant we are able to if you are able to ensure justice very naturally in the relationships so the foundation feeling is trust <coughs> we'll now discuss trust right so <coughs> one proposition here is that trust is to be ensured to be oh, sorry assured <coughs> ashwast hona hai na now what to be assured of can i ever be assured of the other or what can i be assured of the other are we assured of the other today no so one proposal here is that <coughs> trust is to have the clarity that the other wants to make me happy and prosperous right this want part can i be assured of this can i say to myself that yes invariably every moment the other person wants to make me happy and prosperous if no then this very thought that the other, that the other wants to make me unhappy is going to make me unhappy if this foundation is missing hai na our relationships are going to be hai na missing
okay so we'll explore this so to explore this we'll ask a few questions you know many of us have attended workshop so they will very naturally give the right answers right <laughs> no no you just answer right but if you have not attended a workshop they may it take little time because you invest a whole day discussing these issues right since we have shortage of time we will not discuss it in that length so exploring trust <coughs> between two individuals so one part is to explore my natural acceptance so find out i want to make myself happy is that true i want to make the other happy any questions here <laughs> what is your natural acceptance to make other happy or unhappy happy. happy the other wants to make himself or herself happy yes, yes. that we can see now the big question the other wants to make me happy So we'll give some space for this to, you know, explore. So you can put a question mark here. You know, we'll refer back to this. So let us put a question mark here and see with whether this is true or false. Now this is something that pertains to my intention or others' intention, which is our natural acceptance. So intention means the natural acceptance. You know. Now the next part is our living, our ability. Now I want to make myself happy. Am I always able to make myself happy? intention was i am fine i want to be happy right but i am not able to ensure this happiness because the ability is lacking so there is a question mark here i want to make the other happy right but am i always able to make the other happy again there is a question mark right the other wants to be happy but is the other always happy question mark now how about this the other is always able to make me happy Now this is a, you know, a big question mark. You know? <laughs> Now if you see the whole issue in relationship is this double question mark, and that is because we have a question mark here. We have contradictions, conflicts in relationship, you know, because we are you know, addressing these two question marks. So can we be clear about this? Now we can see that. i want to be happy but i am not able to make myself happy and i am able to explain this very easily to me you know because there are so many reasons right <coughs> now if you look at this <coughs> most of the time right we are <coughs> focusing here about when we are uh, trying to see ourselves we say that okay i want to make myself happy i want to make the other happy but when i look at the other i do not look at this part correctly i focus mainly here right and that becomes the source of dilemma confusion contradiction conflict in me i see my intention but when i see the other i do not see the other's intention i see the lack of competence of the other and the problem is that by looking at the lack of ability here i doubt the intention here when i see myself i see that i am not able there are so many reasons for it but i never doubt my intention right so i have explanation for this if i if i get late to the class hai na i have explanation for this but when the other is late to the class i just name is a late comer right if i do a mistake myself i have explanation for this but if the other does the mistake can i blame the other now some examples are given here right if i break the glass then i say that the glass broke by accident <coughs> if the other break glass i pass a judgment here the other broke the glass so i do mistakes accidentally the other does mistakes intentionally if i make the same mistake 100 times i never doubt my intention i make mistakes by accident i have a feeling that i am somewhat special i reinforce to myself that i am good i do not make effort to improve my own competence right we keep on explaining you know, our lack of competence 
but when the same thing is there with the other i doubt his intention i tend to assume that he makes the mistakes intentionally i have a feeling of opposition get irritated angry right i reinforce that the other is bad so i am good the other is bad now just find out how many times in a day we have this kind of judgment in ourselves always hai na i am intentionally good i am basically a good person the other person is hai na trying to disturb me and when i talk about the other the other is basically a bad person hai na it is me who is trying to compromise with the other so doubt and intention is a major reason for problems in relationships can we see this <coughs> so every problem in relationship starts with this doubt and intention this is the seed of every problem in relationship if i am able to <coughs> do away with this doubt i am resolved right then i try to become a help to the other if the intention is good but the other is incompetent the other is lacking the ability then i try to help the other for example if a child is trying to walk intentionally i am able to see that he wants to walk he is not able to walk you know because he is not able so i help the other but when a grown up person son does some mistake i am not able to see that intentionally he is good right but the competence is lacking because there is a whole lot of preconditioning that may have gone within him or her you know and if you see education is a major source of pouring in wrong you know preconditioning like since childhood we have been training the child to think that they struggle in uh, in life hai na the other is your problem hai na you have to compete with the other to survive right and so many preconditions are going inside the other right now when the same kind of feeling for struggling in relationships comes to the family we are uncomfortable hai na so we'll see that we have made several compartments in our life so one is the individual life where we say that okay i'll go by my own notion one is the family where we say that okay, we, when we have to stay together we have to adjust and we have to compromise right when you go to the institution we say that we have to compete with each other we have to grow in life how can i remain there right so we try to you know uh, pull each other's leg we try to you know do so many things with the other when you go in the society then we have to put a smiling face that okay all is good all is good you know everything is fine in the family and try to put a smiling face in the family and finally when we are you know exhausted we sit in one corner of the room and say that okay you know save me right i'm gone now this is something that has been happening in every life <coughs> so if you have additional continuous trust and intention that, that is natural acceptance of the other and if the other is lacking in competence what will you do try to improve the competence get irritated get angry have a feeling of opposition what will you do <coughs> try to improve the competence try to improve the competence if i doubt the intention of the other <coughs> then all these things will take place now if i have trust and intention that is something leading to response so response means to be responsible to the other right so if the other is lacking ability i become responsible to the other in place of reacting to the other in place of being judgmental to the other but when i doubt the intention i react and there are two kinds of reaction the i may react to the other outside hai na only on few moments but within myself and i keep on reacting that is reaction inside so i keep on reacting within myself inside and and sometimes i pour it out outside so if i have the doubt on intention this reaction inside and outside and will be there now just find out <coughs> how many persons do we have trust and intention right the natural acceptance unconditionally continuously so this is fundamental trust and intention is the foundation of relationship you can get an idea of the state of your understanding you know, about relationship from this exploration the feeling born out of understanding of understanding can be definite unconditional continuous right so this needs exploration this needs time right this needs our effort to understand the feeling of trust to ensure the feeling of trust you know when i go to explore this then i have to look into every relationship right and try to see whether there is a problem with the intention or the problem with the lack of competence right so now this i can make out that as i want to make the other happy the other also wants to make me happy you know the other is similar to me the other is just like me right 
so i can see that the competence is lacking in me as well as the other but intention wise we all are sound now this feeling will get extended to every human being because every human being is coexistence of self and body every self wants to be happy make other happy so when i have this feeling and me trust this will percolate to every relationship it will not be limited only to few people in my family or outside my family right it will percolate to every relationship so when i have this clarity right then we can see that even if the other makes the same mistake 100 times i am clear about his intention i know the mistake is due to lack of competence and not a lack of intention so i make effort to help improve his competence with a feeling of affection i know that he may have difficulty understanding and also i may have difficulty in explaining so this kind of generosity this kind of feeling you know of kindness will very naturally come within me and education can be a tool to ensure this kind of feeling in every child the child is investing you know one third one fourth of his lifetime in the education institutions if the education institutions take this onus of ensuring these kinds of feeling in the child will certainly have a harmonious society so to you know sum up trust is to have the clarity that the other wants to make me happy and prosperous if i have trust and intention i accept the other i am assured of the other and we are able to make effort for mutual development i make a program with the other based on right evaluation of our mutual competence in case the other is lacking in competence i make effort to assure the other i make effort to improve his competence once he is assured in relationship and not before that if i lack competence i become ready to take help from the other to improve my competence but when i doubt intention all these things will happen i will it myself on the basis of my intention and others on the basis of their lack of competence you know if i have feeling of opposition with the other it shows up as irritation anger you know and it further leads to fighting struggle war and all these things so you can see that every war starts from this mistrust and we can see you know like on the indo pak border the kind of situation that we have today and how much money we are investing in the name of security if you can work on the feeling of between human beings between nations the the whole world is going to be a much much better place to live in and this is quite possible and the good thing is that education has become so common today that if this becomes a part and parcel of education this can you know result in one or two generations so verify on the basis of your natural acceptance if you want to be related to none one many or everyone so when i am not able to see this then i am in a position to all when i am able to see this then i start feeling related to one then to many and that is called affection and then finally i am able to see that i am related to each and every uh, human being each and every self and that is the feeling of love right so affection is the feeling of being related to the other acceptance of the other as one's relative right love is the feeling of being related to all the complete value <coughs> so the relationship starts with trust and completes with love you know but there is a whole lot of task to be accomplished you know i have to understand myself first of all i have to see that i am coexistence of self and body you know there are feelings in the self not in the body the other is also just like me coexistence of self and body the feelings you know that i have that i have within me naturally acceptable to me the same thing holds true for the other right and then only i am able to relate to the other and then then my feeling of relations we starts next to you know first my neighborhood then to my workplace and then to each and every human being and then only i become a human being in true sense of the word you know otherwise we live with animal consciousness something that was being discussed yesterday and we keep fighting for physical facilities we keep fighting for wrong notions so love is the feeling of being related to all hai na har ek ko sambandhi ke roop mein swikarne ka bhav isoka purnata mirati purnata mirat ho jana lean ho jana hai na har ek ke sath sambandhon mein nihit ras bhavon ki anubhuti karna theek तो परंपरा में देखें तो इन सारे मुद्दों पे बात हुई है है ना इसको हम ठीक से जी पाए और तभी हो पाएगा जब हम अपने अंदर विश्वास के भाव को शुरू कर पाए विश्वास के भाव को सुनिश्चित कर पाए एंड धीरे धीरे है ना वो प्रेम के भाव तक जाएगा इट ऑल स्टार्ट विथ आइडेंटिफाइंग दैट वन इज रिलेटेड टू द अदर ह्यूमन बींग है ना एंड दैट इज स्नेह अफेक्शन एंड स्लोली एक्सपैंड टू द फीलिंग ऑफ बींग रिलेटेड टू ऑल ह्यूमन बींग्स दैट इज लव एंड देन टू ऑल ईच एंड एवरी यूनिट इन नेचर है ना बीट एनिमल बीट प्लांट राइट with any physical physico chemical entity right human being as well as other units so the feeling of love is the foundation of undivided society so we want undivided society we don't want a divided society 
what do you think is this true you want to be divided and keep fighting with each other or you want to be undivided undivided hai na and that is start from me in fact the world may get undivided sometime later but the moment i am able to ensure these feelings in me i become a part of that kind of world order i become a part of that undivided society that universal human order so to reiterate hai na so harmony relationship justice from family to world family so the relationship is there between one self and the other self to have this clarity and acceptance in the self continuously and unconditionally this is something that is very basic there are feelings in relationship in one self or the other self these feelings can be recognized they are very much definite hai na we can talk about them we can address them we can study them their fulfillment leads to mutual happiness having the right understanding and right feeling in myself leads to my happiness expressing these feelings to the other and its right evolution by the other leads to other happiness and justice is when all these are ensured so recognition fulfillment and evolution of the human human relation leading to mutual happiness so do we have natural acceptance for justice in the family is there a boundary beyond which justice does not matter what do you think <coughs> so do we want the justice only to be limited to the family or let it go to the whole world family hai na so <coughs> justice in the family leads to undivided family and justice from family to world family leads to undivided society now if you see india 50 years back joint families were a common sight right now if you try to locate joint family in the society they have become very rare sight now even nuclear families are not able to sustain in noida there is a court at karkar duma and every month not less than 1000 cases of divorce are filed in the court now two people are not able to stay together also and you know, being in a nuclear family right so this kind of world we are resulting in you know, with lack of understanding so educational institutions you know, can they be living models of human family so this is something that we have to address <coughs> so with right understanding the student will develop right feeling and the capacity to live with justice in the hostel in the whole campus in this way the student will have practice of living with justice and be prepared to extend it in his or her family neighborhood community the district nation <coughs> right is that fine this is something doable what do you think so with right understanding and right feelings the teachers staff students management they can all live with mutual fulfillment in the relationship with each other in the whole campus hai na and with right understanding and right feelings the teachers students staff management can be prepared to extend these feelings hai na extend the mutual fulfillment in terms of justice to their family neighborhood community district nation the whole world family so hai na finally this was the thing so yesterday we discussed about the understanding part and okay. today we have talked about justice part and then in keynote 3 we will address these two issues so if any questions are there we can take them up <coughs>